Old buildings and houses sometimes can hide mysterious and forgotten links to the past. Rooms left untouched, abandoned treasures, or perhaps something far more sinister. So get comfortable and let the darkness take control. Number one. I was working at an 100 year old abandoned farmhouse several years ago. My co-worker and I were told to find the well for the house, since they were thinking about developing the property. After looking for a while, we figured it might be in the old house. I grabbed my flashlight and we headed in through a window that wasn't boarded up very well. The place was creepy. The second floor had a burnt goat carcass and pentagrams drawn in ash all over the walls. So that started the chills and goosebumps. We eventually made our way to the basement where I almost fell into the very deep well at the end of the steps. I'm not sure how deep it was, but our 25 inch tape wouldn't hit the bottom. Anyway, my curiosity was still running wild, so we went searching around the basement. My coworker noticed that one of the stone walls didn't make it all the way up to the ceiling, and it was probably a fake wall. Good call on his part. He boosted me over the wall, and I helped him climb over. The first room was empty, and had nothing exciting. Just dark, wet, and cold. Looking around, there was another wall with an opening. I decided to go first, and I was boosted over the wall. My coworker thought it would be funny to hang onto the flashlight for a while, whilst I stumbled in the dark. Finally, he tossed it over to me, and that's when I began freaking out. The room had chains built into the walls, with wrists and ankle shackles. The walls had scratch marks from nails, and I'm guessing that someone tried to escape. I lasted about 30 seconds in that room, before I started to dash over both walls and the well, right out of the window we climbed through to get into that creepy house. I don't think it was just the shackles or the scratch marks that creeped me out, but the ice cold chills that shot down my spine, like there was something truly evil lurking in that place. Number two. I met a college girl that I was living with in a defunct fraternity house. They had lost their charter for reasons I didn't first know. We fell for each other, and I moved in with her. It was a great apartment complex with pool tables and giant showers. One night when we were drunk, she took me to a room that was empty. It had two bunk beds, and above one bed was a secret door. It led to an upstairs room where most of the hazing took place. The story goes that one night during a party, in the dead of winter, a girl was raped by some frat boys. They just left her up there in the cold, and she ended up dying from freezing to death. One of the frat boys was so distraught by the incident, that he went up there one day and painted her picture on the wall, then hung himself from the rafters. Whilst we were up there, I could swear that the eyes on the picture would follow you around the room, and there were reports of crying coming from up there some nights. I never went up there again. Number 3 I went to a high school that was built maybe two to three hundred years ago. Me and my friends noticed these hatches that were about six feet off the floor next to the toilets. For context, the school was based around a quad, so there was a toilet down some stairs at each corner of the quad. Obviously we had to check these hatches out, so we did it during a drama lesson that we snuck out of. We got in there, 
and there was a corridor under the actual corridor, which was only about five to four feet tall, so we had to crawl through it. The corridor connected all the toilets and there were vents on the top of the walls that were the skirting board level in the classroom, so we could watch lessons going on, which was pretty cool. There were tons of pipes and electrical wires, and other non-interesting shit you would expect, apart from in one corner of the quad though. The hatch for this one was locked from the inside. It looked like the pipes had all gone back into the wall, or stopped so that the wall was bare concrete slab, rather than bricks, which was odd. There was a small gap at the bottom of the wall, that I could only just fit through. It was a struggle crawling under as we had our mobiles for torches, and I'm not the smallest of people. When we got through, it felt so much colder in this opening than it did in the corridor. The space was also much more spacious, and we could actually stand up. And also, the lights from our torches didn't light up the opposite side of the room. When we shone them over there, it was as if they weren't even turned on. The room smelt really bad, and I saw what looked like a decomposed cat, which was now just mostly bone and fur, at the side, next to the wall closest to us. Freakier still though, there was a stone arch above where the cat was, with some red writing that I think was blood. It was a few years ago, but I vaguely remember it saying something along the lines of, If you are found here, the school will expel you, but Lucifer shall do much worse. There were a few scratches in the wall, and some symbols that we thought were letters but we couldn't make them out. We instantly got the hell out of there, because we were shitting bricks at this point. It was a fairly prestigious school, so expulsion was probably the scariest thing that could happen to us. Nonetheless, we never ventured to that room again. Number 4 There was some construction being done at a new building at my university. So one day, my buddy and I meet some nice girls at the bar, and as the evening gets late, they ask to smoke a joint with us. For whatever reason, we decide the new construction site is a great location for this, and we go to it. 15 minutes in, and my buddy lets me know that there are cops watching us and that it's time to dip. We start to casually walk away, when the girls decide to book it immediately drawing sirens. My friend taps me on the shoulder and reminds me that chivalry is dead, those girls are on their own, and he has a spot to hide. He takes me to a half-constructed elevator shaft for the new building, and we climb all the way down to the bottom, where we find an underground, massive network of tunnels. When I say massive, I mean multiple channels each, which are multiple kilometers long, at this point we're pretty drunk, and we decide to see how far this thing goes. Every 500 meters or so, there would be a wooden barrier, but a few quick flying body checks made short work of them, and we continued on our way. Eventually we found a ladder and a hatch, and decide that we'd come too far to not see what's up there. So we climb and go through and find ourselves in a locked room in the middle of our university library about a kilometre and a bit from where we started. A janitor walks in and catches us clearly doing something we weren't supposed to be doing. But I pulled my best Seymour Skinner impression and said that we were just trying to find how to get out of there. Thankfully, he bought it, or was too confused to figure out how we got into the locked room in the first place, and decided to let us leave without any further questions. We didn't find anything too exciting in the tunnels, a few empty beer bottles and that's about it. But I made it home without a possession and or trespassing charge, so I will call it a win. 
When I was a senior in high school, I was sitting on my back porch with a friend, drinking and smoking cigarettes, when she suddenly got quiet. After a moment, she turned to me and asked, Where does the window go? I'd lived in the house for five years at this point, and had never noticed the extra window on the back of our house. Amazingly, neither had anyone else in the family. The backyard was pretty overgrown, and we almost never spent any time there. I determined pretty quickly that the window had to be located behind the wall of our bathroom shower, but it was locked from the inside and seemed to be nailed shut as well. What could possibly be hidden inside that wall? Why would you seal up a window from the inside but leave it completely accessible from the back of the house? It didn't make any sense. This naturally became a topic of intense speculation for me and my friends. There must be a body, a cache of old documents, or pirate gold back there. But alas, we couldn't get inside without breaking the window. And I wasn't going to vandalise my own house to satisfy my curiosity. Ten years later though, the house was in serious need of renovations. To include a complete remodel of the hall bathroom. And I finally got my chance. Time had done nothing but sharpen my curiosity about the mysterious sealed window. And as I knocked down the tiles and broke through the drywall, a thousand possibilities raced through my mind. Jimmy Hofer could be hidden back there, or an original copy of the Declaration of Independence, or quite possibly the Holy Grail itself. Barely able to contain my excitement, I ripped down a huge chunk of the wall with nothing but my gloved hand, finally revealing the long forgotten window and a bunch of mouldy pink insulation. Some mysteries are best left unsolved. Number 6 Many years ago, my now ex-husband and I purchased what used to be an old farmhouse. It was a unique old house that had been added onto many times over the years. We started updating it room by room, and we had been living there about a year before we began working on the finished basement. I had three boys from my previous marriage, who were 9, 11 and 14, that lived with us but visited their dad every weekend who lived a mile away. The first project in the basement we planned on doing was to convert one of the good sized storage rooms into a walk-in closet for seasonal clothing and sport equipment. The previous owner had left several chap metal shelving units behind that we'd never moved and weren't part of our new design. The night before I was set to start on the project, the boys and I had rented videos and watched Stir of Echoes with Kevin Bacon. From what I remember, the movie was about the dad character Kevin Bacon, having dreams and visions about a young girl who had died and was trying to get him to find her and solve the murder. It wasn't too intense, but had a few suspenseful parts with jump scares and special effects. I recall the ending being something about him digging in the basement trying to find the dead girl, breaking through a block wall and discovering her behind some thick plastic sheeting or something like that. Predictable, but we all enjoyed it especially my 11 year old who loves scary movies. The next morning, the boys all went to their dads. The new husband and I start to get to work on the storage room. And the walls in this room are covered in thin panelling. I start moving the metal shelving out of the way so that I can begin my work. When I see the panel on one side of the wall, the shelving, isn't snug against the wall like the rest. It's kind of gaping a bit at the bottom. I take a closer look and see a very small side lock, like a miniature deadbolt, cut into the panelling in a distinct cutout like door. What the hell? We have a secret room. How cool! I can't keep this discovery all to myself. So I run upstairs and call the boys at their dad's. I tell my youngest 11 year old son and he gets his bike and pedals over to the house as fast as he can. 
he's super excited to check it out with me. So I slide the lock and pry the door open with a screwdriver. The first thing we see is a thick sheet of plastic sheeting just like in the movie we'd seen last night. Holy shit. We slam it shut and start laughing. He says we've got to be brave and we find a razor knife and slice through the plastic. Inside is a small room with a sandy dirt floor, several old TV sets and buckets and old glass tubes and an old desk with newspapers in it. No dead body or Kevin Bacon to be found, but we sure had fun going through the desk and laughing about the secret room that we called the Stir of Echoes room from that point on. I was then told that it was an old fashioned root cellar that was used to store root vegetables like potatoes back in the day. What a strange coincidence that we'd watched the stupid movie the night before. Number 7 A while back, a friend of mine moved into a new house by the docks. The first time I was walking up to the side door, I noticed a small looking door on the side of the wall of the raised porch. I inquired, and all they could tell me was that they called it the Rape Dungeon, and that they'd never been down there. I think there was some creepy story to go with it involving a little child. I told the guys we needed to find out what was there, but soon forgot after looking around the house. Next time I went over, I insisted that we needed to make our way into that room, and find whatever goodies it had in store for us. An hour or two later we ended up in front of the door having a smoke, and it seemed like it was time to bust in. We found some tools, and broke the old rusted lock. Ten or so minutes later, we were peering into a dark, low-roofed room, not being able to see more than two feet in front of us. Someone saw a light switch and flicked it on revealing a small room that looked like it hadn't been touched in many, many years. A big wooden barrel lay to the left, the kind that they used to make whiskey in. On the right was a small metal can with coiled copper tubing running through it, a huge mixing rod of some kind and some weird looking pillboxes. As soon as I saw the coiled copper pipe, I realized that we'd stumbled into a moonshine dungeon. The whole room looked as though it had been dug out by hand with concrete pavers laid dodgily on the floor. And in front of us, another opening into a back wall that led us to a room with a wire bed frame on one side and stacked to the roof were large old bottles in the other. We were excited at this point to say the least. We started poking around found some old Playboy mags and other weird bits and bobs. I was inspecting the barrel that was on its side, when I knocked out one of the chocks that was keeping it from rolling around. I went to pick it up from behind where the tyre was, and I saw a plastic bag or something of the sort poking up from underneath. So as you do when on a treasure mission of sorts, I started to pull. This is where things get really interesting. I get the bag up and find that there's another bag inside, and another, and another. This thing goes on for about 40 or 50 bags before I reach a completely see-through bag that has some weird black thing inside. At first we thought it might be heroin or something, but after peeling back the plastic, a wallet is revealed, so now we're really excited, as this treasure hunt might actually pay off. We walk outside into the light to see what it might be. A wad of hundred dollar notes, thicker than I'd seen in a while, that added up to about seventeen grand. That is a day I will never forget. Number 8 I used to live in downtown Greenville, Texas in the 1990s. Greenville used to be a thriving cotton town in the 1950s, but the population has declined and downtown is mostly abandoned. My friends and I explore the abandoned buildings for fun, being urban explorers. Anyway, 
There was a multi-story building that used to have Mexican restaurants downstairs in the 70s, but it had been abandoned since then. The bottom of the building had been locked up tight, but we were given access to the roof from a neighbor's building and finally got inside the building that way. Inside were some old offices, nothing much of interest, but I noticed a crack in the wall behind some peeling wallpaper. There was a door-sized sliding panel that had been papered over decades before. Behind it was an apartment that would have been used for housing by the people who owned the business downstairs, and it was largely untouched. I found newspapers there from the 1940s, and the last one was dated 1947. So weird that this place hadn't been touched in over 60 years. Number 9 When I was in high school, my dad purchased this old Victorian house he intended to flip. Before he got around to working on it, he'd let me hang out there with my friends. It seemed pretty cool, until the first and only night we decided to spend there. We set up an old TV and DVD player, and basically made the whole living room empty with a big, lounge sleeping area with beanbags and blankets. It was getting pretty late, and we started to hear noises coming from upstairs. It sounded like scratching and rustling. Nothing too freaky, probably just mice or something. Well anyway, one of the guys that was over decides that we should investigate. We head up the stairs and use our phones for lights, as there are no fixtures that work upstairs. We walk through the hall, getting closer and closer to the noise. We get to the huge built-in bookshelf at the end of the hall, and the noise somehow seems to be coming from behind. My friend starts knocking on the wall behind it to see if anything stirs up. We're still assuming some kind of animal or something is behind there. He starts monkeying around with the shelf and manages to pull off the entire thing, and it ends up being a hidden door behind the bookshelf. Of course we're giddy, because this is some shit that you only read about or see in films. We shine our phone into the room, and it's as if it was straight out of a horror movie. Filth everywhere. Super old looking toys, cobwebs, and the creepiest part of it all, super deep scratches on the back of the bookshelf from fingernails. You could even see the dirty handprints that went along with them. It was the thing of nightmares, and we got the hell out of there. I spoke to a local neighbour a few weeks later who had lived nearby his entire life. He said that one of the previous owners of the property had a disabled son. They never saw much of him, but whenever he was out and about, he looked pretty beaten and tired. The dad was an asshole and hated his kids. It got me wondering if he could have been the reason behind those scratches. Definitely one of the scariest things I've ever seen. Number 10 About 18 months ago, my dad purchased a house that was a church in a past life. At some point the church closed, and the pastor continued living there for several years as he remodeled the church into a house, which eventually bankrupted him and ended up with the home going into foreclosure. Almost every room in the house on the main floor had an exterior door, and there were a couple of different staircases that led into the basement. Several months after purchasing the house, whilst going up the stairs from the basement into the attached garage, my dad noticed a weird carpeted shelf on the side of the stairs. Looking more closely, he realised there was a handle, which when lifted up, revealed a hidden door that goes into another, small staircase. Once down the hidden stairs, he realised there was a hidden 8x10 secret room, with concrete brick walls. The room is nearly soundproof, and you really wouldn't notice it unless you were looking for it very closely. He jokes that he's going to use it for the storage space of all his food, water and weapons for the apocalypse. Makes me wonder though, what the church used the room for? 
Hey guys, it's Mort here, and thank you so much for listening. I know not all of these were very scary, but I hoped you liked the video nonetheless. These stories aren't so easy to find, and I didn't want to regurgitate stories that you'd already heard. Alas, I hope it was to your liking. Please express your thoughts in the comments section below, and smash that like button to let me and everyone else know that you enjoyed it. Remember that if you've had a creepy or paranormal experience that you wish to share, feel free to send it to my email which you can find in the description. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter at the Mortis Media for some secret stuff you won't find anywhere else. But anyway, for now guys I'm going to sign off. Stay awesome and I'll see you in the next one.